do, which is on the Pythagorean Theorem. So this lesson uh, in class, what I had you do was I gave you uh, an investigation which dealt with right triangles. Uh, you all remember what right triangles are. Right triangles uh, look kind of like this. Here's an example. Uh, and <clears throat> Uh, more specifically, what we talked about was the relationship of the sides. So in the investigation, uh, we had taken a triangle uh, that was given sides A, B, and C. And in the grid, it also had a square that was the same length as side C. Uh, now, obviously, this is a little different than uh, what we had. Here, I'll shrink it there for you. So there you go. Um, so, you were given a triangle that looked at sides A, B, and C, and uh, I told you first to find the side lengths of A and the side lengths of B. So actually, I'm going to redraw this so that it um, matches more closely with um, our... investigation. So three. Okay, so that's kind of what our triangle looked like. I'm going to shrink it again so we have more room. Actually, I'm going to rotate it a bit too. Okay, so I've rotated it 90 degrees to the left, um, but it's really just a mirror image of what we did in class. Uh, so we had side lengths A, B, and C. And from this, uh, let's see here. And here's your square, square that's off of side length C. And there it is like that. So this is kind of your image. The only difference is uh, it's flipped as opposed to what it was in the investigation. So what you had to do was find the length of A, the length of B first. And so if you notice in the grid, uh, A was uh, four units and B was three units. And so uh, next part, what they had you do was they had you build a square off of both A and B. So we make a square off A and B. That's probably a good picture and a good idea. Here's another one for B. It's probably pretty close. So here's your A and here's your B square. Uh, what you're supposed to do then is then find the area of each. So if we find the area of A, since A is a square with side lengths of four units, you all know how to find the area of a square. Area of a square is, you guessed it, base times height. Since this is a square, your base and your height are the same. So the area, or A squared, since they're the same, is going to be 16. Then you also had to find the area for B, which was this bottom square, and that would be B squared, and again, my side lengths are 3 and 3 units, so base times height is 3 times 3, or B squared, and that gives me 9. Uh, then you were supposed to compare the areas or then you were supposed to find the sum of the two areas. So that's basically um, a squared plus b squared, which is 16 plus 9, which is 25. Next, what they had done for you was they, were, they had taken the square of c, since it's really hard to find the area of a square that's turned, they actually turned it for you, rotated it, and set it down on the side. Now, if you measure the side lengths in the grid, you found out that it was 5 units as well, by 5 units. So, 
we find the area, which would be ending up c squared, which is 5 times 5, which is also 25. So then you were supposed to write about, well, what do you notice between the relationship between the sides of a, b, and c? Well, if I take the area of the square that's made from side a, the green square, and add that to the area that's made of the square that's made from side b, the blue square, that's going to be the same as the area of the square that's made from side C, or the yellow square that I'm highlighting here. Okay? So, that's basically the Pythagorean theorem for you. You have a right triangle, and if you take the area of the squares off of the two uh, sides uh, that are not the longest side, and add them together, you get the area of the square that's made from the third side, the longest side of the right triangle. Uh, so that's basically the biggest part of the, the investigation. There was a little bit more, uh, but that was mostly developing the formula. There was another part two was you had you got a different triangle with different side lengths and to check to see if it worked, and of course it does. Um, so basically what you should have gotten from uh, this investigation is when you have a right triangle so let me just draw a right triangle right now whose side lengths are A, B, and C uh, the relationship is the length of A squared plus the length of B squared will equal the length of C squared now this is the general form. Um, I don't really like this form because A, B, and C move. They don't have to stay in the locations that they are. I could put A where C is and C where B is and B where A is. What's really important is that no matter where they are, you use the relationship. So, in the current position, these would be, instead of a squared plus b squared equals to c squared, this would be b squared plus c squared equal to a squared. All that you remember is, whatever your side lengths are down here and here, you add those squares, and that's equal to your longest side squared. That's what's really important. And so let's um, let's actually talk about that a little bit more. That's basically all the exploration was about. So let's give you some more information related to the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem states that if you have a right triangle, okay, and we know it's a right triangle because the angle here is 90 degrees. Um, there's a few bits of information we need to know to talk about this. It's actually mentioned in the investigation, but uh, the, the two sides that make the 90 degree angle are called legs. So we have a leg here and we have a leg here. So we have two legs. You can call it leg one and leg two. And the longest side, which is the side opposite the 90 degree angle, is called the hypotenuse. And I think I've mentioned this before uh, in previous videos, the hypotenuse. And I think I remember saying hypotenuses in one video. Uh, but basically, um, the uh, hypotenuse, the Pythagorean theorem, basically is just relation between the legs of the right triangle and the hypotenuse. And it's more apt, it's more appropriate for us to say, I take leg 1 and square it, and I add to it leg 2 squared, and that is what will equal my hypotenuse squared. So this is a more appropriate form of the Pythagorean theorem, because leg 1 and leg 2 
is a definite thing that will never change. It's always a leg. And the hypotenuse is always going to be the hypotenuse. None of this A, B, and C, B, A, C, whatever order it may be in. It'll always be leg 1 squared plus leg 2 squared equal to the hypotenuse squared. And that is what is really important. Okay. Oops, got stuff on there that keeps popping up on me. There we go. Okay, so what's really important here is not so much that, again, not so much that um, we have a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. It's, it's that leg 1 squared plus leg 2 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Now, this works both ways. So we're, in this example, uh, we were given a right triangle. So if you have a right triangle, then you can say this about the side legs. This works both ways, as I said before. If I have a triangle, and if I should say side 1, because we don't know it's a right triangle yet, plus side 2 squared equals side 3 squared, then it will be a right triangle. So if we just have any random triangle, okay, oops, there we go, and I say side 1, side 2, and side 3, if I square each of them, add side 1 and side 2, and that equals side 3 squared, then I know this will be a right triangle. So it works both ways. If I have oops, too far back, if I have this situation, if I have a right triangle, then I have this formula. And then I can jump to if I have a triangle that has these sides, it's going to be a right triangle only if this formula works. Okay? So basically what this means is I can also talk about what if it's not a right triangle? What happens if they're not equal? So that means if I have a triangle, okay, let's say we'll call it A, B, C for now. If A squared plus B squared is greater than C squared, that means my hypotenuse side, or what I hope is my hypotenuse, is going to be smaller than the two sides. That means I'm going to have an acute triangle. If it's greater than, or I should say if a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, that means my c is bigger. It's gotten bigger, right? Which means we have an obtuse triangle. All right? So I'll do a couple examples uh, for you here. So our first example is let's say I have a triangle and I know its sides are oops I heard something there ooh low battery we'll get that taken care of eventually so if I have a, a triangle and I know its sides are mm, 15 20 and 25. The question is, is this going to be a right triangle? Well, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. And actually, I forgot a piece of information that's really important. Um, and this is what you would do. All of these numbers can be divisible by 5. 15 divided by 5, that's 3. 20 divided by 5, 
that's 4. 25 divided by 5, that's 5. We have a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And we know it's a right triangle because in the investigation, when we did 3 squared plus 4 squared, that equals 5 squared. 9 plus 16, that's equal to 25. Remember the areas? So, if you have a hidden 3, 4, 5, you know it's going to be a right triangle. 15, 20, 25 is a multiple of 3, 4, and 5. You just multiply 3, 4, and 5 by 5. That gets you 15, 20, and 25. So this is a right triangle. And anytime you have three numbers that work in the Pythagorean theorem, we call this a Pythagorean triple. So 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. Other common uh, Pythagorean triples are 5, 12, 13. I believe that one was also in the investigation. Um, another one, 8, 15, 17. These are the three most common Pythagorean triples that you will ever see, and they will most guaranteed to be on the CSD test. Um, and they will be very useful, uh, especially in construction of houses, of buildings. We use these Pythagorean triples all the time because the triangle is one of the most stable uh, shapes in our world. Uh, so that's Pythagorean triple. Uh, and that's an example for you. Let me give you one more example. Let's say I have, um, let's see, I, I want to check to see if 8, 9, and 10 are a Pythagorean triple. Or if they fit the Pythagorean theorem, if it gives me a right triangle. Well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put this in the Pythagorean theorem. So I have 8 squared plus 9 squared equal to 10 squared. And my question is, does it equal? Um, now, you, some of you are probably asking, why don't I do 9 squared and 10 squared? Well, the question is, remember, the hypotenuse is the biggest side. So that's why it's always going to be, the bigger number that you have is always going to be on the opposite side of the equal sign. So let's just solve this real quick. 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, and 10 squared is 100. 64 plus 81 is 5 plus 8 plus 6 is 14, so 145 compared to 100. It's bigger than 100. So that means I have a squared plus b squared greater than c squared. So that means this is not a right triangle, but an acute triangle. Oh, he's so cute. So that's the whole triangle. Uh, and let's give me another example. Let's say I have 2, 3, and 4. 2 squared plus 3 squared, does that equal 4 squared? 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. 4 plus 9 is 13, that's not equal to 16, in fact it's less than 16, so we know we have an obtuse triangle. He's so obtuse. So those are a couple examples for you. So here is your multiple choice question. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video here now to go ahead and answer the question. If you have any questions about how to do this, go ahead and go back in the video. And here is your free response question. In your town there's a field that is in the shape of a right triangle with the dimensions given in this diagram. 35 feet, 80 feet, and the hypotenuse, and x feet from my third side, my second leg. You have to find the perimeter of the field. You are going to plant dogwood seedlings about every 10 feet around the field's edge. How many trees do you need? So that's something you need to think about. If you Once you find that, how many trees you need, then you can find out answer C, answer for letter C. If you know each dogwood sells, seedling sells for $12, how many trees, which will the trees cost? So that's your questions for today. There's your video. Hope you have a good night, and we'll see you in class.